How much extra power can you get out of a Softail 114 cubic inch engine by upstaging? Catch you inside. Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Please like, share, subscribe, leave loads of comments below and check out the website revelatoralf.com. So in this video, I'm talking about the Harley Davidson uh, Milwaukee 8 engine, the 114 cubic inch. And I'm gonna talk about uh, the different stage upgrades that you can do, how much they're gonna cost in ballpark figures, and what uh, horsepower gain you'll get, and also what torque uh, gain you'll get. Now all this is uh, located on the the parts accessories catalog on page 434, 435 on the Screaming Eagle. Now this is all dependent on uh, the, using the Harley parts, the Screaming Eagle parts as well. Obviously if you go to another manufacturer there will be slight performance differences. Uh, you might have some gains, you may have some um, reduction. It really depends on the combination that you use. But this, as, a, as an idea, will, will be a, a good datum to work from, uh, at least. So let's just talk about horsepower first of all. The stock horsepower from the 114 uh, cubic inch engine on a soft tail. I, I ride the sport glider, as you know, with the 107. Uh, but 5,500 RPM, uh, you're talking uh, hun uh, sorry, uh, 80 horsepower to the rear wheel. And this is all corrected for the rear wheel because essentially that's where all the action goes, right? Okay, for a stage two uh, on the 114 cubic inch with the horsepower cam, the extreme uh, air cleaner and the street cannons, you're going from uh, stock at 80 uh, horsepower, and that's going all the way up to uh, just below 110 uh, horsepower, about 109 horsepower there. So we're talking in the region about, what's that, 29-ish, 29, 28, 29 uh, horsepower gain. Now, stage two with a torque cam, obviously because it's a torque cam, you're not gonna get the horsepower on this. It's, uh, it's got the ventilator, uh, air cleaner, and the street cannons. Here, uh, we're talking uh, at about 100. So, yeah, uh, let's say 99, actually, that would be fair to say on that one. Uh, so, what, 19, 20 uh, horsepower gain. Stage three, um, which effectively, you're, you're changing the 114 to 117 uh, cubic inch with uh, extreme air, air cleaner and street cannons here. Uh, we're talking that is actually going to just below 110, it's about 117, 118 uh, cubic inch. Actually, so if you just went with a stage two, you're getting more performance than with a stage three. Or, or more horsepower, I should say. Uh, and then you've got stage four. Yeah, and that's when the big guns come out. You know, uh, extreme air, air AC, street cannons. Uh, and that's taken up to 116, 117. So you're looking at 36, 37 horsepower gain uh, from the stock to the uh, stage four. The torque is a bit of an interesting one. If we look at the torque at 5,500 RPM, um, that's where it starts dipping off. Actually, the, the, the biggest torque is always at the lower rev range, not in the higher rev range. The horsepower is in the higher rev range, okay? That's basically just to keep things going, maintaining speed. But to get something in motion that's at lower RPM, that's, a, that's where the torque comes in. But at the higher torque, a reading, sorry, at the higher uh, RPM reading, 5,500, the stock uh, is at uh, 78 uh, foot-pounds of torque to the rear wheel. Stage two is actually at 105 uh, foot-pounds. Stage, uh, that's with the horsepower cam. Stage uh, two with the torque cam uh, is actually down at 93, 94. And with the stage three, uh, with the extreme AC and the street cannon, so that's at 102, 103, very similar to stage two, actually. And stage four, yeah, that's when it gets uh, noticeably different with the A, extreme AC and the street cannons. And that is at 102 or 103. So between stock and stage uh, four, uh, we're talking uh, 34, 35 uh, foot-pounds of torque 
gain. That's what we're talking about. Now, interestingly, if we uh, bring the figures back 3,500, um, the biggest torque gain that you will get, uh, or, the, or the highest torque figure that you will get, will actually be from a stage two with a torque cam, and that will give you 120 foot-pounds of torque, as opposed to the stock, uh, which will give you at about 106. So we're talking about, what, 14 foot-pounds of torque uh, right there. Stage four, it's actually got a lower uh, foot-pounds of torque there. It's actually just at, at about the same level as a stock but that's when it starts to climb up afterwards and that's when you're gonna get the performance gain afterwards. I think it's in really interesting here, when you talk about the, the, the money here for each one, uh, let's say for a stage one upgrade, it was, uh, stage one upgrade is about 800 to 2,000 pounds. Do the maths with the dollars and euros, but a similar kind of cost. If we're looking at stage two, another twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, stage three, two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Stage four, three thousand six hundred and fifty uh, dollars. Pounds, whatever shekels, it could be whatever it is. Uh, but let's say it's ten thousand pounds, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand euros. Uh, that, that's for all the four stages. Okay, that's how much it might cost you. You've really got to decide what kind of bike you want what engine performance you want and crucially when you want it that's the most important thing do you want it all horsepower or you're not really caring about getting off the line but you just want to get higher speed or, or as high speed as you possibly can and the power to maintain higher speed do you want torque uh, the low end grunt at the low rpm at slower speeds or do you want that to build up gradually do you want it flatlined do you want your torque right at the top and you want it all the way across that's something that you're only going to be able to achieve with getting your bike on a dyno uh, a dyno and tuning it there and then it really depends what kind of equipment that you're going to put on whether it's screaming eagle whether it's uh, vance and hines whether it's whatever you know and name any manufacturer you like the combinations in between it really depends if you just want the torque for lower end you don't really care about high speed or anything like that you might want to think about especially on a 114 cubic inch engine actually i don't need to have a stage four i just go with a stage two uh, with a torque cam and that's all i need that's going to give me better low end torque and that's it and i'm you know i'm never going to be riding any more than that any faster than that because let's face it i don't want to lose my license i want to keep on running you know you just want to beat a few cars at the lights uh, and away you go and it's going to sound awesome and you know you're going to have all the power you need but actually if you want something that you do want to have really good highway miles, uh, good highway speeds, or you want to take on a racetrack or something like that, actually going for a stage four with the horsepower is going to give you the, 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 the one to go for, and that's going to give you the best overall performance. It's, you know, it's apples and oranges, isn't it? It really is. It's the age old question. You know, how much performance are you going to get from upstaging and where are you going to see the benefit? And also, is it worth the, the price that you're going to pay? So if you're going to spend a couple of thousand pounds, dollars, whatever, on each individual stage, or are you going to spend the whole 10,000 and just go for a full stage four? Should any of this be uh, standard? I've, I've said for a long time, actually, well, for a long time, uh, ever since I've been doing this channel, uh, I should say, um, that I always thought that the the soft tails should be given the option of having a 117 engine. You know, as as you know, you either have the 107, the 114, or the 117. Effectively, when you're getting to stage three and four, that's what you're turning your bike into: 117 cubic inch. You know, is, is it worth spending all that money? Well, as I said in a previous video, it really depends where you think the benefit is. Are you getting the value out of these upstages? And is it worth that money? If we consider performance upgrades on cars or other motorcycles, if you want to have, you know, 20, 30, 40% 
uh, difference or gain in horsepower and torque, you'll be spending that amount of money, no doubt. You know, on a car especially, you will be spending more than more than that. On a sports bike, you know, if you want to have that percentage gain in increase in power, you will be spending, you know, in the thousands, you know, to, to achieve that. But it's not all about the horsepower, is it? It's always about the overall package in a bike. It's all about, you know, it's stopping performance, it's handling performance, all that kind of stuff. The suspension, whatever. But if we're talking purely uh, performance uh, gains, yes, you're definitely getting it with the with 114 cubic inch. Um, but certainly on the horsepower, you're definitely getting the, the incremental increase with each individual stage. However, you're, it depends on the torque, where you want that torque to come in. We're really determining whether you, you know, which stage you go for. Then, also depends which uh, individual components you use, um, what tuner you're using, where you'll get the most benefit and at what RPM will you get it as well. Again, how much is this gonna cost you? It could cost you even more than 10,000, 15, 20,000 uh, just to actually achieve what you want to achieve it. The only advice here is to, you know, do your research. Do your research before you actually, you know, leap in with both feet and, and choose something that may or may not be suitable for your kind of riding as well. Speak to lots of different people. I wouldn't just speak to a Harley Davidson dealership, but they are a good source of information, of course, but they're going to be talking about a lot of their Harley products, the Screaming Eagle product. See if you can go to Independence, look at what other people are riding and what they're using as well. And actually, if they've got any dyno figures for the performance upgrade that they've done, that will be the best one. If you know if there's a dyno tuner in your area, see if you can book an appointment with them and speak to them and see what their experience is of tuning Harleys and the different uh, equipment that they've got on there and what performance figures they're getting out of. Because essentially, that's the only gauge that you're going to have uh, to really determine whether it's worth it or not, whether you're going to get value out of it or not. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what another bike does or what another manufacturer does or what another person thinks. Actually, it's about your riding experience and what you want for your bike that's going to be the most important thing. But anyway, a lot of this information, as I say, as a datum, as a good starting point to start thinking about this, is all in the parts catalogue. So uh, the, this is the 2019, but depends which one you've got, of course. Uh, page 433 or 434 or 435. You've got the 107 and the 114. You've got, obviously, for the different uh, models as well, uh, you've got the, the touring, the CVOs, all that kind of stuff as well. I'm certainly not saying that you have to get Harley parts here, and I'm certainly not saying that you even have to do stage upgrades. You might be perfectly happy with your standard stock 114 cubic inch engine. And if that's the case, no problem at all. In fact, my, my, I salute you, uh, my hat off to you. I'm kind of in that ballpark myself. I'm Actually, I think they're really great engines, and there's enough power there as a stock bike. But this is all about tailoring to individual tastes. And Harley Davidson have always done this. You know, this is nothing new. This is nothing we, we have to start banging the drum about saying, why isn't all this standard? Well, I kind of think it should be standard anyway. All this performance should already be there. Personally, I think it should be. But at the same time, Harley have always done this. They've always produced a base model. Then it's up to everybody else to, or you as a customer, to start putting on add-ons as well. That's the Harley model of business. That's the way they've always done it uh, for the last 60, 70 years, or whatever. So, you know, this is the way it is, really. But anyway, if you found that useful, uh, let me know. Let me know about your performance upgrades. Let me know, not necessarily about what you've done, but really if you've had it dyno tuned and what the performance gain is and also where you're getting it in the RPM. That's really important. But leave all the information in the comments below. Let us know uh, about these uh, 
stage upgrades and do you think it was really worth it at the end of the day? Are you really happy with a performance upgrade? Have you done a performance upgrade and then you've done another one, you've changed it again and was it better, was it worse? Right, leave all the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe. Check out the website revelatorhealth.com and I'll catch you on the next video. We're coming very soon. Ta-da now. Revelator Health.